Oh, sorry, my bad. Amen. Beautiful. Beautiful. What a joy it is to be here with all of you. Hello, church. Good morning, church. Or good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you stumble upon or you choose to be here for um, worship with West Portland UMC. I am Pastor Christy, and this is Memorial Day weekend. It happens to be um, a beautiful day here in Portland. And I am so glad that we are able to do this. We are able to gather and worship safely wherever you are. And again, if you stumble upon this, if you find it later, um, man, we are so glad you did. And just pray that there is something awesome that um, God is doing within you and how he's touching your heart today. Pray with me, please. God, thank you so much. Thank you for this weather, the warmth that we are having here. And wherever um, someone might be um, when they are worshiping with us, that um, I pray that they can sense your warmth, that they can feel the safety, that they know that um, we gather in fellowship. We gather to lift up your name with glory in our words, in our song, in our time together. I ask your blessings on our worship experience today. Amen. from the stormy blast and our eternal home before the hills in order stood or earth received her frame from everlasting thou art god to endless here's the same a thousand 
thousand ages in thy sight are like an evening gone. Short as the watch that ends the night before the rising sun. Time like an ever-rolling stream, there's all who breathe away. They fly forgotten as a dream dies at the opening day. Our God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Be thou our guide while life shall last, and our eternal home. Everybody, um, we are on week 51 of reading the Bible in a year, and between this week and next week, we are looking at the books of Job and Revelation. So this week, we're going to focus on Job, not Job, even though it looks like Job. It is Job. Job is a character who we have um, a very extensive writings of his experience with God. Now. You may have heard of Job before, or this might be completely new to you. If you've heard of Job before, then you are familiar that this is about suffering and lamenting and being tested, faith being tested in a way that just becomes unimaginable early on. If you've never read Job, or you need to read it again for the first time, I encourage you to read it with an understanding that there is more to the story than just the gory details. In fact, that's a big part of, of life is, is there's going to be all sorts of details of our lives that make up the pieces of our lives, the different mosaic pieces. Yet it's important that we take a step back and that we look at the bigger context. 
I'm going to read today from Job chapter 19, verses 23 to 26. Oh, that my words were written down. Oh, that they were, indes they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that a pen, an iron pen, and with lead, they were engraved on a rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my side. Pray with me, please. God, as we take some time and just venture into um, a little bit of uh, Job's story, may we understand that there are parallels, but it's not a comparison. May we understand that there are elements of his life that um, might seem far-fetched. There might be words in the writings that just don't make sense but I pray that each and every person just hangs on a little bit longer and reads through and then spends extra time with you in prayer to help understand this experience. Amen. Well, as I was saying in Sunday school, um, I had a friend of mine that I was checking in with and I, we used to she used to volunteer for me with um, youth ministry and I hadn't seen her for a while. It'd been a couple of years. And um, I said, how's it going? And she said, it's been a season of Job. And I said, and, and when you say season, it's not just the four seasons of the year that kind of have a chronological understanding. A season in the biblical reference could be any length of time that usually doesn't have a calendar assigned to it. It's just, man, I'm just going through this. So a season. Um, she said, um, it's been a Job year. And I said, okay, tell me more. And I proceeded to hear how um, she and her husband had both lost their jobs and their adult daughter um, dropped out of school. And they, um, the house they were renting was going to be sold. So they had to move and they were having trouble finding a place to live, especially with a reduction in income. Um, her husband, who's a um, Vietnam vet, um, was really struggling with his PTSD and some of the challenges that have come um, since he physically returned home from war. Uh, she was facing some health issues. And I'm just going to pause there because there was more. And as she was sharing, I found myself starting to Oh, that's, oh, that's horrible. Oh, and then I got to the point where I could no longer have capacity for just hearing of these life events to a point where I'm like, oh, you'll be okay. Just like, oh, you know, you fell down, scraped your knee, brush it off and keep walking. No, you guys, the, it was intense. And, and I think of her to this day because not only was she comfortable enough to share and God put me in a place where I had one job, and that was to listen, not compare, not try to fix, it was to listen. And you know what? They held on to their faith the entire time. So my gift to her was listening, and her gift to me was the gift of faith and perseverance. Well, where does that come from, folks? Where does that come from? Why did I read from Job 19 when there are um, 19, 18 chapters beforehand where Job is constantly facing loss. Now, I'm not just talking, you know, lost keys, lost wallet, lost phone, um, lost his way and, and got, you know, couldn't find his way home. No, we're talking loss of um, his livestock, loss of his home, his servants, his children, his um, source of income, his house, the fields. And then his health. In fact, it gets pretty um, grim. Well, if you're looking at Job chapter 2, um, he gets to the point where all these things have happened. Excuse me. All these things have happened. And there's a very interesting conversation. In fact, I think that's a good place for us to go back to. Because wait a minute. Pastor, why is all this happening? 
why why are we reading this entire story why is god why is job being afflicted well let's step back well as it happens um we find that job is a man a man from the land of us and he was blameless upright he feared god and shunned evil okay now there is um some people think that every single word and every single thing that happened happened just like that and it was as bloody and gory and devastating and then there's others that consider job is one of the most amazing works of literature that there's a lot of poetic license that there's alliteration and i'm going to let you choose which it is for you okay the goal is to understand that we are discussing um suffering we're understanding suffering so job is put to the test because satan and god are having a conversation god says hey satan where you been what have you been up to satan's response is eh, going here and there roaming around back and forth checking out things here on earth god said to satan have you noticed my friend job there is no one quite like him, honest and true to his word, totally devoted to God and hating evil. Well, let's step back a little bit. Is that Satan's job and God's job are very similar. They're, they're, they're in the winning people over business. But God steps in to do good and to bring people in so that there can be more good in the world. Satan's just the opposite. Trying to recruit people, we'll entice, we'll tempt, we'll bring them in. We'll go so far as to saying, oh, your God, your God has abandoned you. Come on over to my side. And as we said earlier, the dark side, okay? So this little, this is hard to wrap my brain around and I'll even say it. This is one of the toughest things that, that for me to read and, and try and understand is Satan and God kind of have this little competition because Satan's like, God, are we really going to, are you really going to say that Job will stay faithful to you and not lose his faith if he loses all these things? So it is a systematic series of chaos and trauma happening to Job. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, he loses all these things. And what it comes down to is Satan saying, so you think Job does all this out of sheer goodness of his heart? Why, no one ever at it so good. God, you pamper him like a pet, like he's the teacher's pet, right? Make sure nothing bad ever happens to him or his family or his possessions. He is so blessed with everything he has and does, he can't lose. But God, what if you reached down and took away everything that was his? Guess what? He's going to curse you right to your face. So we've got the throwdown. We've got this challenge that's happening. God's reply. Well, very well then. Everything that Job has is in your hands. But do not hurt him. Do not kill him. Well, once you've read all that he's gone through, that's enough to kill your spirit. It's enough to kill your soul. It's enough to kill your will to live. And you might think that some of these things he would have been killed during. But he wasn't. He even had someone very close to him challenge his faith. Very well. Very well. Here is the test. All these things have been lost. And Eric, I realize I had another song for you to play. And I'm going to get to a pause here and have you play it. Okay? All right. All these things are happening. Job's integrity was still intact. Satan went out to the presence. It stayed out, went for the presence of the Lord and afflicted Job with painful sores from the soles of his feet to the top of his head. And then Job himself took a piece of pottery and scraped himself as he was sitting in the ashes. His wife came up to him. His wife, his spouse, his partner in life. Are you still holding on to your integrity? 
still holding on to that precious integrity, are you? Curse God and be done with it. Job's reply was, woman, talking like a foolish person. God gives us good days. Why not also accept the bad days? Eric? I'm tired, I'm worn, my heart is heavy from the work it takes to keep on breathing. I've made mistakes, I let my hope fail, my soul feels crushed by the weight of this world. And I know that you can give me rest So I cry out with all that I have left Let me see redemption win Let me know the struggle ends That you can mend a heart that's frail and torn I want to know if a song can rise from the ashes of a broken life and all that's dead inside can be reborn cause I'm one mm. I know I need to lift my up, but I'm too weak. Life just won't let up. And I know that you can give me rest. So I cry out with all that I have left. Let me see redemption rise. Let me know the struggle ends. And you can mend a that's frail and torn I want to know a song can rise From the ashes of a broken life And all this light and light can be reborn Cause I'm torn My prayers are wearing thin Yes, I'm worn even before the day begins Yes, I'm worn I've lost my will to fight Oh, I'm worn So heaven come and flood my eyes Let me see redemption win Let me know the struggle and a heart that's frail and torn I want to know a song can rise From the ashes of a broken life And all this dead in light can be reborn Cause all that's dead inside will be reborn Though I'm worn Warren, that's where we find Job. He is sitting in a pile of ashes covered head to toe in sores and cuts. His wife is challenging him for his still consistent faith in God. And it's important to remember that um, she was suffering too. It was her house, her income, her children, her servants. And although women were still seen as, as property and didn't have the 
the um, equality and status that women, um, more women do now. Um, this was still her life. She was still a beloved human being and child of God. And she's also watching her spouse suffer. So she gets, she reaches her threshold. But honestly, that's all we hear about the wife. And um, she was encouraging him because he's the, he's the head of the household. He's the one that's going to be um, leading the person of faith. Well, Job wasn't alone in his suffering. He had three friends that came about. Eliphaz, Tamanite, or Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. They show up. They heard about their friends suffering. And when they showed up, what did they do? They sat with him for seven days. And they sat in silence, folks. They sat in silence and they continued to pour the ash over him. As it reads in chapter two, <clears throat> excuse me, from 12 and 13, when they saw him from a distance, they didn't recognize him, but they raised their voices and wept aloud. They tore their robes and threw dust in the air upon their own heads. They sat with Job on the ground for seven days and seven nights, no one speaking a single word. For they saw that his suffering was great. Now, there is some context in that. There's some context in that um, in the Hebrew traditions, when you are suffering, and you may remember this from um, uh, Ash Wednesday, is the tearing of the clothes, the um, pouring on ashes. And the reason we put the ashes on our forehead is to identify the suffering. It's to identify a season of lament. And it wasn't a competition, folks. Everyone was in the same experience. Everyone was in the same boat. They recognized his mis misery and they sat with him. This pitiful sight of their friend, they were themselves overcome with grief and they sat with him. They knew that words would not be adequate. They didn't try to fix it. They didn't try to um, com have a competition as to whose life was worse, minimizing Job's suffering. But they also didn't um, accentuate and exacerbate it by saying, oh my gosh, this is horrible. They didn't add to the wife's um, request that Job give up on God. The only thing they could do was be present. Just be present. So a little bit more about the book of Job is that yes, it is about um, suffering and lament. It is about mourning. It is about being challenged. It is also about how Job communicated with God. Job, Job's presence, the, okay, I'm gonna go through mourning. But his statement that God gives us good days, well, guess what? We're gonna switch that. There are good days and there are bad days and God is present in each folks. God, Joe, Joe read it as God gives us good days and gives us bad days. But if we just shift it, and the reality is suffering is just part of humanity. Suffering is part of life. We have good days. We have bad days. We have multiple good days in a row. We have multiple bad days in a row. This is all part of life. And God is present in all of this. Amen. Amen. The way we relate, the way we behave, and the way we communicate with God on good days and bad days is a reflection of our faith. Now, it doesn't mean that, that we're always going to be happy and always saying, praise God. We are going to say, God, I will still praise you in this storm. I will still praise you in the storm. I will still praise you when I am afflicted. I will praise you when I am alone. I will praise you when it seems like I have reached the end of my rope but there's still a knot at the end. This is where we as Christians realize that suffering is part of our job. Now, I want to be clear here. That doesn't mean that we sign up, we get paid to suffer. It means that part of our job is to recognize suffering in the world 
and have compassion and be moved to do something at times. There's, there's going to be times where um, you actually um, go and you volunteer, you donate, you um, hand out that bottle of water, you sit and listen to someone, you sit with them. Okay. There's also going to be times someone's going to hop on a plane with a small knapsack and go and get engaged at an orphanage, at a refugee camp, something like that. But in order for any of that to happen, folks, we need to become aware. We need to acknowledge the suffering. And as Christians, it's, it's hard to acknowledge someone else's when we haven't had our own. Okay. So um, I've been reading a book for my book club, and I will admit I probably, I probably won't finish it or read all of it. Um, it is by Heather Morris. It is called The Tattooist of Auschwitz. And it's a true story. Um, and, and I feel like Job's wife at some point when I'm reading some of this and all the atrocities that are happening. And I'm only um, on chapter three. And, and it's not that I don't care. It's not that um, I, I, it's not that I don't want to um, have a greater understanding of, of loss and challenges. It's, I do understand. I do understand. And I see where this man who is Jewish, um, his faith was challenged, but he didn't lose it. He didn't lose it. If we were all sitting like on a retreat or had some longer time together in person, we would be having times where we would be sharing more than just our joys and concerns for the day. We would be sharing of times when we've had afflictions. That's part of being a faith community folks is that we get to share in one another's lives the joys and the concerns reverend faith conklin from um, southern california she's the um, dean of course of study at claremont school of theology and she was my dean and i had her for a couple classes and she's one that always says you know for former students you can call and reach out and yesterday was one of those days because I have just been praying about this service, this sermon for, for several weeks because I saw that this was coming up. It's Memorial Day weekend, the day that we don't say thank you to people we have served. We acknowledge those who lost their lives while serving the country. The memories of these people, their lives, the memories of, of what it was like to get the notification and then how to live life without them. It's Memorial Day. It is, it is also um, a lot of times where in our current culture, we have a three-day weekend, we celebrate, we have sales. But this Memorial Day is different for faith. So I called her last night and I said, Faith, when you are going to preach on the book of Job, she's retired clergy. She was the first female elder in Calpac. So she's, she's lived a lot, of, uh, a lot of challenges and she's preached on Job quite a bit. I said, Faith, when you're preaching about Job, what are some things that you are sure to say? She goes, well, it's an interesting that, that you start the conversation with that question. It's been rough. And I knew at that point there was something significant in her life that had happened since the last time I spoke with her. And she could tell by my silence that I was, I did not know. And she goes, oh, you haven't heard. And I said, has John passed? And she said, yes. John's her beloved husband who would be turning 80 next month. And John would accompany her at school. He even sat in on a couple of classes because he was so fascinated with all this. Yeah, Christy, John passed away a week and a half ago. And she shared a little bit about that, how the last two weeks of his life, he's been ill. He's been ill for several years, but the last two weeks of his life, he was well enough to go up and down the stairs and he had even gone out and run errands. He was doing great and he ended up in the hospital and there was nothing that could have saved him. She shared more about that sacred experience, but you know, it didn't take her long to turn it into so when I'm preaching about Job, 
my understanding of suffering is suffering is part of life. Suffering is an invitation for Christians to step into someone's life. You don't have to try and understand everything. You don't have to try and fix it. You don't have to try and make it all better. You don't have to try and, and minimize their suffering by elevating yours. You get to be present and help them walk through it. So I want to I wanna end with this. Um, two things. One is the recognizing of it. And you think about the last time you saw something, someone said something or a symbol or a sign or something, and you reacted to it. And you reacted in a way that was either, yeah, I'm going to go support that, or how dare they, or that's not important. And I bring that up because we definitely are still um, in, a, we're still with our ongoing fight on racism. And this is one of the signs that I have that says Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter enough to end police brutality, to cease the war on drugs, eliminate mass incarceration, support schools and affordable housing, create a fair jobs economy, pay, pay reparations to Black America. Folks, you could add LGBTQIA lives here. You could add indigenous lives here. You could add um, Asian American Pacific Islander lives here. You can add at any time in American history, Irish, Italian, any immigrant, our Latinx folks. Humanity matters enough. Humanity matters enough to end police brutality, which is happening by standing up with the training and helping understand what has led to it. Enough to cease the war on drugs, to eliminate mass incarceration, support schools and affordable housing. Folks, West Portland is answering that call to do their best to provide some affordable housing, to support families. You know, we no one person can, can solve it all. No one, fix, no one person can fix it and make it all better. But we can be present with them. We can be present during the storm. We can be present during the chaos. I'm going to read Psalm 121, and Eric is going to sing for us. Again, this psalm was um, Eric Weaver's favorite. We read it at his service. It's also the um, inspiration for the song that Eric is about to sing. Psalm 121, I lift my eyes up to the hill. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. For God will not let your foot slip. He watches over you when you slumber, when you will not, you will not slumber. He indeed watches over Israel and will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. So the sun will not burn you and harm you by day, nor the moon at night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over the your life, you. and the Lord the will watch you over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. Job did experience God showing up. That's what we read, and his story was written down in history. We read of Job's suffering so that we too know that there will be good days and bad days, that friends will come around and sit with us, and some days you're going to be that friend that goes and sits with someone. Christians filled with compassion and love and grace and mercy. That's our job. sure by now God you would have reached out and wiped our tears away stepped in and saved the day but once again I say amen and it's still raining as the thunder rolls 
whisper through the rain, I am with you. And as your mercy falls, I'll raise my hands and praise the God who cares and takes away. God, we praise you in the storms of life. We praise you on the sunny days. We come before you when we are mad, when we are confused, when we are downright angry. Because we know you are there, Lord. And you've proven to us time and time again in our own lives that you are faithful to us. And we get the chance every single day 
to be faithful to you. Amen. Wow. In that, how can we support one another knowing that when we recognize someone's suffering, that the number one thing we can do is pray. How can we pray for one another today? Callie says, Anna might be coming back, her teacher whom we've been praying for. Amen. I sure hope so. What other joys and concerns? And you can take yourself off mute. You can type it in the chat box. You can type it in the comment section if you are on Facebook. And hi, those of you who are on Facebook. Definitely pray for um, the uh, employees and the families and those affected by the shooting down in San Jose at the transit center. There just seems to be more and more unveiling of how troubled that gentleman's life was. And how much suffering? Pray for those who are seeking um, seeking support um, for their mental health. Mental uh, may have been Mental Health Awareness Month, and some have seen it as a uh, drink of cool water on a hot day. Others have struggled. It may have um, opened up um, a space of difficulty. And I'm just praying they find the right resources, that they find the peace, that they find what they need, um, and that they know, um, as someone who struggles with depression, it's nothing to be ashamed about. It's um, part of our reality. It's part of the mosaic of our, of our lives, and we are not alone. Pray for those whose stories have been shared recently, um, who had the bravery to step up and share whatever the topic was. Pray for Lisa's mom, Carol, has had another setback in her recovery from her broken pelvis. She's experiencing a lot of pain right now. Definitely be praying for Carol. Continue to pray for um, Carrie and for Linda and their um, healing. Pray for those who are graduating in 2021 including Lisa's niece, who happens to be turning 18 today, who would really benefit from knowing God. Pray mm -hmm. that the path to God is something that she recognizes and that she is able to receive that. And we've got Ben and Calder that are graduating this year and Sarah Brown just graduating with her master's. It's an exciting season. I shared Tuesday in the All Church email that last Sunday night I was able to meet, thanks to Debbie and Rachel for setting it up. I got to see Calder and Marin and Toby and Mariah and Jasmine all in person. So excited. Of course, they've all gotten taller. And if you don't know who they are, those are um, some of the youth from the church. Yes, Mariah and Jasmine are old enough to be youth, junior hires. And... Um, Ben and Aiden were working, but it was so delightful to see them, and they're so excited. You'll see them on the 20th. They'll be there for our in-person worship. And Kurt, you've got a prayer request here. I, I know. I just typed lousy. Sorry about that. No, you're fine. Would you want to um, lift it up? Say it out loud. Uh, just a prayer for uh, for all the uh, the souls of all the men and women who served in our country's military who've given their lives in, uh, in protection for our country and to their families who've had to endure it and deal with the processes thereafter. Amen. Amen. You, Rachel, Pastor. I'm sorry, go ahead. That's it. Thank you, Pastor Christy, for recognizing Amen. Veterans Day and Memorial Day are two separate holidays or two separate things. I appreciate that. You're welcome, Kurt. You're welcome. Rachel is asking for prayers for those who are um, struggling with um, COVID-19 for them to make full recoveries. And for whoever can, please get vaccinated. Please contribute to the solution. And also prayers for Landon. You know, it's not easy. And um, prayers for each and every one of us as we engage in conversations or um, interactions with folks 
who, um, and who are on maybe a different side of the vaccination story than you are. Um, help us enter that experience with grace, but owning our own needs and our, what we need for safety. Um, I'm still wearing a mask in public um, for my own safety and safety of others. And I don't know when things will be different. I know it won't be like that, but I'm leaning on trust and, and science. And um, people have asked me and questioned, well, if you're a person of faith, don't you believe that God will protect you? And I say, well, I've had COVID. <laughs> and, um, and God has protected us by um, giving us opportunities to be aware of how to not spread it. And I'm going to lean on that. Um, Brian, Dee Dee, you have a prayer here. Pete and repeat. Brian has actually repeat. it's a re actually it's a praise. Pete and repeat <laughs> got their vaccines. Love it. Oh my gosh! Amen. Amen. And you know it's a it's interesting because we'd like to know how much of the congregation has been vaccinated to what percentage are we contributing to the solution but we also are aware that for some people that's not a comfortable conversation um and we're doing our best to honor honor it all honor it all just like whether we're playing all hymns or all contemporary music or a blend right can't please everybody but we certainly have to do our best to honor those who walk in um prayer for my brother gil he turned 70 yesterday and i don't know how that happened because our mom is definitely not that old are you billy um just uh, prayers, lots of joys and celebrations. Join me in prayer. God, thank you. Thank you even on the days where it's not easy to say thank you. Thank you for shining your light in the darkest of moments. Thank you for being present and offering an, a, a presence that might just be silent, that might just be... Um, the hand on the shoulder from a friend or that kind smile or eyes from a stranger. Lord, thank you in advance for your provision, for the needs that have yet to be met. But we also thank you because you have faithfully met our needs, even if we don't realize it, or even if we think that our need wasn't met. Lord, help us get into that space of understanding that part of the mystery of faith is it's not automatic this is not a burger king world where we get it our way right away this is you are not a vending machine god that, that we are part of this continuum this human timeline of saints who have gone before saints who have yet to come and this is all experience thank you god for being present for giving us the tools of fellowship of sacred text of music because when people sing they pray twice lord and and thank you for giving us the prayers the ability to pray on our own, but also to pray collectively, like the prayer that your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, we have a blood drive coming up, folks. That is one of the most amazing things anyone can do. And um, it is on Friday, June 25th, 10 to 3.30. And um, we need more people to sign up. Peggy, you remember, you don't need to worry. It's going to get full. But what kind of invitation would you like to make for our folks this morning? If she can. Well, I will just um, speak for her is that um, sign up is available. The sponsor code is down there. Um, Peggy, I do want to share with you that some of the youth want to come to your volunteers for that day. So we'll put some people in contact if there's anyone else that wants to take a shift. It is an exciting way to um, be present in the community and greet people. Again, the Red Cross does a great job of um, uh, safety protocols. And um, this is definitely one way that people can reach out and meet needs. I wanna thank you for that. Um, there's so many opportunities. In fact, here we go. Uh, Justin and I, um, we're um, 
he's in the office one to four Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And in the next few weeks, I'll be there as much as I can. I have some mandatory things that require my attention that um, may make it difficult for me to be present if I am actually there. And we're working on Thursdays by appointment. Again, um, I'm still here, still your pastor till the end of June. Um, I leave on the 25th, but um, we definitely want to connect. I understand there's a party on the 6th, so I'll see some of you then. And we're meeting in person for worship on the 20th. I am so excited. I'm so excited to be able to see you guys and um, in worship. And it will be a short service. It will be at 930. Masks will be required. And um, we will also be going live. Because folks, the hybrid worship, we were doing it long before pandemic. We're going to continue that as well. Because we have learned that we have a digital congregation that that the way that God God in, reaches West Portland UMC is outside of those walls. In fact, we've been doing it for over a year, doing it for over a year. So I just want to um, thank you for um, your faithful giving, folks. And um, you'll see here, this is what our offering plate looks like. And you know what? It will continue to look like that. It won't be safe to pass the plate. We may have one sitting at the back if you really like to set your check into it. But um, you may send in your check, you can text, you can give online. And um, thank you. Just thank you for your faithfulness, your faith, your belief that God will continue to use us to do good in life. Appreciate that so much. And I invite you to join us as we sing our closing hymn. <laughs> like a river attended my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul it is well
that um, if you don't know the history of it, the gentleman was having a very Job season in his life over a couple of years. And I encourage you to research what's the history of the song, It Is Well With My Soul. Same with our songs, Oh God, Our Help in Ages Past reminds us that God has helped those before us. Why wouldn't God help us now? So let's get out of our own way. Let's get out of our own sense of timing. God, I need it. I need it now. Let us have more faith and patience and trust in God. Let us also know that um, our story is important. This is my story. This is my song. We don't pick hymns blindly, folks. The suffering we may be experiencing now is not unusual. It's part of being human. And God showing up with Jesus, who was human and divine, shows us that there is the spirit all around. And I want to close today highlighting and um, asking for prayers for Reverend Faith Conklin, her daughter CJ, her son-in-law Sean, and their, their daughter Serafina, as they are learning to live without John and going through this Job season. And it is well with their soul that it's still tender. Thank you for joining us today. And I invite you to join us in our closing spoken benediction. Do not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world. All things break and all things can be mended. Not with time, as they say, but with intention. So go. Love intentionally, extravagantly, unconditionally. The broken world waits in darkness for the light that is you. Amen and amen. And Eric, I'm going to have you play our postlude, and then we need you to stick around for a little while. Okay? Okay. All right.